Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. A drone that finds a missing person in Kentucky after 29 hours. That's really cool. The XPRIZE competition that's using drones to autonomously fight wildfires. An unofficial world record for the longest endurance multi-rotor flight. And finally, some changes to how waivers are requested and how they're submitted. Let's get to it. And first up this week, a Drones for Good story out of Kentucky. On December 20th in LaGrange, a local man was reported missing after failing to return from his routine afternoon walk. As temperatures dropped and daylight faded, the Oldham County search and rescue team was called in. And the search area included a lot more than just neighborhood, but also a large dense forest area that were completely unreachable either on foot or even by ATV. So the county's aerial response team deployed a mobile command post and then decided to launch a bunch of drones, including a DJI Matrice 4T. Uh, after hours of searching, one of the assistant chief pilots, uh, Justin Hilliard, said that he spotted a faint heat signature on his thermal feed. He said that uh, it didn't look like a person at first, more like a, a plastic garbage bag, he said, that was filled with water. But a team member was sent to the location on foot and moments later, they confirmed that it was actually the missing man. Uh, he was alive after 29 hours in the bitter cold uh, and was unable to walk. So thanks to the drone, this actually ended up being a rescue and not something worse. Uh, obviously in light of previous week's uh, story that we talked about with the ban uh, from the FCC, this is yet another reminder that another person's life was saved using an inexpensive drone that had a thermal camera on it. Next up, we're looking at how drones are used to fight wildfires before they even get started. Uh, this is the XPRIZE wildfire competition that's pushing the boundary for autonomous technology with a massive challenge. And the challenge is to find and extinguish a wildfire inside of a thousand square kilometer area and to extinguish it within 10 minutes. Now, one team that's called Crossfire is using a true drone system. Uh, the first one is the eye of the operation, which is an off-the-shelf DJI drone that's equipped with thermal and optical cameras and the video feed passes through a deep learning model that is trained on thousands of fire images and that enables it to detect real fires with uh, at the same time ignoring all the false positives. Once the fire is confirmed, they send the second drone, which is the action drone. Uh, this is a FreeFly Alta X, which is a heavy lift uh, platform made in the United States, uh, normally used for cinema cameras. It's tasked with carrying a water-filled balloon and then dropping that balloon in uh, a very precise location, just meters on top of the flames in order to extinguish the fire uh, at the source. We all know that drones cannot really carry the same amount of water that a helicopter can, for example, but here the precision is the key. So traditional aircraft are going to drop that water from high altitude with a lot of it actually being scattered by the wind. This method here instead uses very precise uh, pinpointing of the fire and reduces the waste and extinguishes the fire with a much smaller uh, amount of water. So of course regulation around autonomous flights and payload drops are still a major hurdle for this kind of solution, but the competition is very important here because it funds research and allows engineers to test different components so that firefighters don't have to do it with their lives. It really helps with what's possible and shows that drones can give firefighters the one thing that they need the most, which is more time. Uh, pretty cool competition if you ask me, and we'll keep you posted if we see more. I want to take a quick minute here to talk about an upcoming webinar that we are going to be hosting. Uh, this is all about how to land a client in seven days. So if you're struggling to get your first client, this is perfect for you. Uh, you need to pre-register if you want to attend. We're going to put a link in the comments, so make sure that you go and click on it, and then we'll hopefully see you there. The next story comes from our friend Alex Suarez, who holds, well, multiple different hats in the industry, including this one, which is Drone Builder. He created a multi-rotor drone that flies for four hours. That's right, you heard that right, four hour flight time. And this is not a small drone either. You can see the picture here. It's a large exocopter a drone with a very large propeller. Large is an understatement here. Currently, I don't know if I can actually say what flight controller battery and propeller he's using uh, because he's trying to get an attempt with the world record, with the Guinness world record. But this is extremely impressive achievement, especially considering that this was four hours of hover time, not actually forward flight time. Uh, Alex is in the process, like I said, of attempting a Guinness World Record, and we'll keep you updated when we hear more. But for now, great job on that uh, first attempt. 
And finally, the FAA has changed the process to submit waivers. Instead of submitting through the FAA drone zone, waivers are now being submitted through what's called the Aviation Safety Portal. Uh, this is only for waivers. Uh, we're gonna have a full video about this change very soon. We're updating the course uh, that we have for waivers to uh, help folks go to the right place. But for now, if you have a waiver to submit, make sure that you uh, have a login.gov account first. You're gonna need that. And then uh, you're gonna submit all of your new stuff through that new uh, aviation safety portal. For registration and for airspace authorization, everything is still done under the uh, old FA drone zone. All right, that's it. Happy New Year, and we'll see you on Post Flight, which is our premium community show where we share the uncensored opinion uh, about all of this, including what we talked about last week because we weren't able to do uh, a post flight. So we're going to be talking about this FCC stuff. So make sure you don't miss it, and we'll see you then. Thank you.